I've got two problems today from a South African math contest. And so one of them is fairly simple and uses like high school algebra, and the other one uses some number theory. Okay, so let's look at the simple one. Let's suppose that we've got real numbers x and y that satisfy the following system of exponential equations. We have two to the x minus two to the y is one, and four to the x minus four to the y is five over three. Our goal is not to find x and y, but to find x minus y. And along the way, we'll see that it is most definitely possible to find x and y with a couple of extra steps, but we're not gonna worry about that. So let's take this second equation and notice that it can be factored. So we've got four to the x minus four to the y. That can be written as two to the two x minus two to the two y, which is the same thing as two to the x quantity squared minus two to the y quantity squared. But we can apply the difference of squares factorization formula to this to see that we get two to the x minus two to the y times two to the x plus two to the y. Okay, so we know that this entire thing is equal to five thirds. And then we're given that this bit right here is equal to one. So that tells us that this bit right here has to be equal to five thirds. So that gives us a maybe simpler system of equations to work with. And that is two to the x plus two to the y is equal to five over three. And then two to the x minus two to the y is equal to, let's see, one. Now, maybe we can think about this two to the x and this two to the y as being its own variable. And then we've got a system of two linear equations and two unknowns, where those unknowns are two to the x and two to the y. So maybe we could add these two equations and we'll see that we get two times two to the x is equal to five thirds plus one, which is three thirds, so that is eight thirds. And then we could subtract these two equations to see that we get two times two to the y from this bit right here, notice the two to the x cancels here, is five thirds minus three thirds, so that is just two thirds. But now we can divide both sides of each of these equations by two, and we'll see that we get two to the x is four over three, and then two to the y is one over three. Now using exponent rules along with some division, we see that two to the x over two to the y is equal to four thirds over one third, but that's just equal to four. But over here, we see that's the same thing as two to the x minus y but then four is two squared. So that tells us that X minus Y is in fact two. And so that maybe finishes off this first one. We get X minus Y is equal to two. And so now let's move on to the second one. Okay, we got done with this first problem. Now we're ready to look at the second one, which we use some number theory. So let's suppose that we have an N digit number and it begins with 1137. So that means it looks like 1137 and then maybe a bunch of other digits. And our goal is to show that these digits can be rearranged so that the result is divisible by seven. Okay, well, let's maybe keep in mind that it's easier to talk about divisibility if you have a handle on the last digits than on the first digits. So let's maybe start off by making the following rearrangement. So we've got A is going to be equal to 10,000 times B plus, and now I'm gonna write this as A1, A2, A3, A4 with a bar over it. And that just means the number that's made up with digits A1, A2, A3, and A4. So that tells us that here, this A1, A2, A3, and A4 is just a permutation of 1137. Now we're gonna break this into cases and then simultaneously use the notion of uh, modular arithmetic. So 
the cases that I need to break this into are built around the remainder after dividing this 10,000 times B by seven. In other words, their residue modulo seven. So like I said, these are the cases when this object is congruent to zero, one, two, three, four, five, or six mod seven. So let's add that in here. Okay. So now we'll look at each of these cases individually. And in fact, we'll only look at the even cases. So when we have zero, two, four, or six, and I'll leave those odd cases for homework. Okay, so let's look at case number zero, which is when 10,000 B is congruent to zero mod seven. So that means that we need all of the rest of this stuff, A1, A2, A3, A4, well, that number that's made up of those digits to also be congruent to zero mod seven. So I think the best way to do this is just with trial and error. And what you'll end up seeing is that 3171 is congruent to zero mod seven. That means that our number A is equal to 10,000 B plus 3171, which is congruent to zero plus zero, which is congruent to zero mod seven. But being congruent to zero mod seven is the same thing as div being divisible by seven. Okay, so now let's move on to this second case. So that'll be case two, because again, we're only doing the even cases, the odd ones will be homework. And so this will be 10,000 B is congruent to two mod seven. So that means that we need our digits, A1, A2, A3, and A4, to be congruent to five mod seven. That way we'll have two plus five is seven mod seven, but that is zero mod seven. And so again, it's just trial and error. So in this case, you can play around with it for a little bit and you can notice that 7131 is congruent to five mod seven. So now putting that all together, we'll see that A is congruent to two plus five, which is congruent to seven mod seven, which is congruent to zero mod seven. But being congruent to zero mod seven is again, the same thing as being divisible by seven. So let's maybe get rid of these two cases and we'll do the last two. Okay, so to finish this off, we'll look at the fourth case and the sixth case. So the fourth case is when 10,000 B is congruent to four mod seven, which means we need the rest of the stuff to be congruent to three mod seven. Again, by trial and error, you can notice that 1137 is congruent to three modulo seven. So that means that our number, which is the sum of this and this will be congruent to four plus three mod seven or zero mod seven. So the last case is when 10,000 B is congruent to six mod seven. And again, by trial and error, we can see that 1317 is congruent to one modulo seven. But if that's congruent to one mod seven, then when we take the sum, it'll again be congruent to zero mod seven, thus divisible by seven. And that finishes off all of these cases, except for these that are left for you guys to maybe play around with. And you can post in the comments exactly how you finish those off. And that's a good place to stop.